praise our Lord and Spirit and truth. If you feel led to stand up, raise a hand. Just let's worship together. I'm going to announce this singing group as brother and sister. Accurate. <clears throat> Y'all pray for me this morning. Him too. <laughs> one down at your feet every moment of my wandering never changes what you see I've tried to win this war I confess my hands are weary I need your rest mighty warrior king of no matter what I fish, you're by my side. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust. tomorrow brings there's not a day ahead you have not seen so in all things be my life and breath I want what you want Lord and nothing less when you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move when you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you I will trust I will trust I will trust in you I will trust in you Lord you are my strength and comfort you are my steady hand you are All throughout my history Your faithfulness has walked beside me yes, Lord. The winter storms made way for spring In every season from where I'm standing I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. 
Help me remember who I am we. The fear may come, but fear will leave. You lead my heart to victory. You are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life. All over my life I see the cross, the empty grave The evidence is endless All my sin rolled away Because of you, oh Jesus I see the cross, the empty grave The evidence is endless All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus, oh, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life. All over my life, I see the evidence of your goodness. All over my life, all over my life, I see the promises in fulfillment. All over my life, all over my life. Why should I fear the eminence is here? Why should I fear oh, the eminence is I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasures of faith are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Now I'm not afraid To show you my weakness My failures and flaws Lord you've seen them all And you still call me friend Thank you Lord Cause the God of the mountain Well he's the God of the valley there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Say that part again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing. 
nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn mourning to dancing. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. You're the Nothing is better than you. Nothing sounds better than hearing you guys sing with me. So sing it. Here we go. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You guys sound great. Do it again. Oh, there's When darkness tries to rule over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. No shame no longer has a place to hide. And I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Oh, there's power in your love. There's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear 
doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Oh, I'm standing in your love. I'm standing, I'm standing in your love. So. So all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Sing it again All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. Thank you, Lord. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. You're so good. Yes, you are, Lord. God, you're so good. God, you're so good, you're so good to me. Sing it again. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good, you're so good to me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after it's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me All my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I will sing 
of the goodness of God. Um, Pastor, you want to come up and say anything, a few words? Before Pastor says a few things, I forgot one, uh, one important prayer request. Um, and sorry, especially if they're listening to it on live. Uh, you know, Brian, Deanna, the twins, um, and then two other churches, um, Connection, and there's the church down on Miller. I wish I could remember the name of that. But those, those girls are participating in the all a state Kentucky golf tournament today. My son's down there with them, and uh, we just want to make sure that they represent the Lord today and that the only thing that they have in mind is sharing Jesus. I know that's how those girls work, and uh, that God will give them a safe return home. So let's pray. Oh, yeah, I, miss, I miss them all today, but... Y'all want to keep Oh, Uno Moss, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to sing one a cappella. I apologize in advance. <clears throat> Shackled by a heavy burden, neath a load of guilt and shame. There Yes, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul, something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. See? I met this blessed Savior Since He cleansed and made me whole Well, I will never cease to praise Him I'll shout it while it turned up Yes, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul, something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. And Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? He said, Lord, how we know who touched you with all these people? He said, I felt virtue go out of my body. Woo, boy, I'm power here this morning, praise the Lord. But I can tell you this, if you're looking for a healing, you better look to Jesus. If you're looking to be saved to make it to heaven, you have to look to Jesus. I'm just telling you right now. Woo, let's fix this thing. Turn that thing down. I don't praise the Lord. All right. But I can tell you this, the Lord is good. Amen. Listen, you're in the Father's, you're in the Father's house. If you feel like running, I say this about every Sunday anymore, everybody run in a clockwise pattern so we won't run into each other, okay? That's all right, because run, running ain't out of order as long as you're doing it for the Lord, okay? If you raise your hands, raise them because you feel this thing. If you shout, you're shouting to Jesus and not me. Amen? And not only the Lord's what matters. We've done our job, we go to the house, and we're praising the Lord. Amen?
to praise of his people. Oh, if you want to see God more, you want to feel him more, you've got to reach out to him just a little bit. The Bible says to draw down to God and he'll draw down to you. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Woo! Praise God. Brother Tony, you ready? Lord, I want you to pray for Brother Tony as he comes to bring the message. But when you're praying, they can feel it. A preacher can feel it when you're praying. I have a kind and honest heart asking God to bless him so he can become a mouthpiece for the Lord. Come on, Come on brother. I tell you about that. Brother Tony, it's already been a good place to be this morning. And uh, Brother came back and asked if, uh, if I was a preacher. I don't know who told on me. <laughs> but uh, at some <laughs> The Lord told on me, didn't he? Uh, but I just came to have church, and uh, my, my daughter goes to, to school with so many in here, and, and, and my wife, and I went to school with so many of you in here. And it's just a good place to be. And I, I do preach, and, and actually I've been preaching since 2004 when I felt the Lord call me to preach. And I was ordained back in 2006, uh, not long after my wife and I got married. And, um, and, and your pastor's right. I do preach under Brother Tommy England right now over at Blessed Hope Free Will Baptist Church. But now, I like to tell everyone I started under Brother Belmont Johnson. Anybody remember Brother Belmont Johnson? And uh, he, he took me under his wing several years. Well, he didn't have a choice. I married his granddaughter, so he didn't have a choice uh, but, but to accept me in. And he told me when I announced that I was feeling called to preach. Thank you, brother. He said, uh, I told him on a Sunday morning, and he said, why don't you preach tonight? I said, that's not much notice. He said, if you're called to preach, you don't need one. <laughs> and I've never forgotten that. He said, be ready in season and out of season. And, and so I've, I've always been ready. And when we left this morning, I grabbed my Bible, and, and I had that, that still small voice say, say, get your notes. Just, just grab, grab everything. Uh, grab what you got and, and just go to church. So, so that's why I'm here. And uh, I'm very glad to be here this morning. And, you know, I, I could listen to Brother Jason preach too. And he probably, I don't know if he remembers this or not, but, uh, and, and I still have it at home. But you see, about 10 years ago this month, I didn't have a hair on my head or my face. And that brother right there, when we went into his store, me on a walker, because I couldn't walk. I think I may have been on my cane. I couldn't get my walker around too many places. But he gave me a hat, because I always tried to cover up the, the baldness. And he gave me a hat, and I have it to this day. And he saw me with it later. He said, I, see, I said, Jail, that's, that's mine. That's mine now. And, and brother, I'll never forget that. And thank you for that. Uh, cause about 10 years ago I couldn't walk and God had other plans and about the same time they told me that I would never have kids and my wife is sitting back there with both of them this morning and, and she's, she's starting to cry right now she's starting to cry she's got the tears already and so you know for all that God has done for me the very least that I can do is live for him and um, I preach his word not because it's something that I want to do nobody steps into this and a pure want it's something we have to do because God tells us to and if you got any sense about about you at all when God tells you to do something just do it just do it. And, and so this morning, the, the message that I've had all week, and, and I didn't have anywhere to preach this morning scheduled, and so I had this, and, and I used it several weeks ago, and it's a thought that's been on my mind for, for so much. God ha has, has used this on me several times. But all the way back in the very beginning, all the way back in Genesis, all the way back when you had Adam and Eve doing their thing, after they had sinned, 
And, and Satan had come up to them as, as that. The Bible calls him a serpent there. And he comes up to them and he goes up to, to Eve. And he tells her, eat of this tree. Why won't you eat of this one? And she just flat out tells him, because what God has told me is that if I do, then I will die. And the serpent just as, as bluntly and as lyingly has he said, and this is what he does to all of us still. He goes up to her and he doesn't paint this great big picture. He simply does what he's so good at and he makes her doubt. And he said, surely you won't die. And it's so, so important for us to understand that what God has told us, Satan is going to make us doubt. Satan has told us that God is not going to keep his word to you. And one of the things that Brother Johnson always said when he, when he was witnessing to people and he was praying at the altar, which by the way, I love seeing this altar full. I love a full altar. Somebody would always say, well, I just don't know if he'll save me or not. He said, well, do, he said, well, do you think Jesus would lie to you? Well, well, of course, everybody's going to say no. But what Satan does is throughout the Word of God, we have his Word telling us he will never leave us, he'll never forsake us, he'll carry us all the way into the end. He will give us strength, he will give us comfort, he will take us and through whatever we need. But yet Satan comes up to us and he says, well, this is the time that God's going to leave you. This is the time that God's not going to be with you. And I dare say that there are people that are sitting out of church today simply because they have listened to that lying scoundrel and believe that God has actually left them and is not with them all because they're having another trial, all because they're having another storm. Just like when Jesus went down to take a nap into the boat and everything started coming up and happening and they went running to him, do you not care that we perish? And he was right there with them anyway. We do the very same thing because Satan comes up to us roaming about, seeking whom he may devour, and it starts with lies, it starts with doubt, and he comes up to you and he says, do you think God is really with you right now? If God was with you right now, you wouldn't have gotten that diagnosis. If God was with you right now, you wouldn't be having those financial problems. If God actually cared about you, and you can fill in the blank with whatever you want to. But he made her doubt. Surely, you won't die. Scoundrel. You know, he's a serpent in Genesis. He's a dragon in Revelation. Somebody's been feeding him. Somebody's been listening to him. And so, later on, here, 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 here's the scripture this morning. In Genesis 3, 8 and 9. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the, of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? That's it. That's all I got. That, that, that's it. Where art thou? You want to put that in English, where are you? You want to put that in East Kentucky, where y'all at? Where art thou? And the Hebrew for that is one word. Ayaka. One word. One word God called out to them. And you've got to remember, we're talking about God. He knew where they were all along. He knew exactly where they were. He wanted them to tell him. Why, is it we, why, why do you think we must confess with our mouth? He wants to hear it. Where are you? And now you can take that physically. You can take that emotionally. You can take that spiritually. Because we all know where we are physically. We're at Caney Creek Church. It's a great place to be this morning. But preacher, I'm not where I need to be spiritually. It's a great place to be at the same time because you got people here that will pray for you. you got people here that will pray with you. And it doesn't matter what church you belong to or where, what church you go to. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. And I feel within myself, brother, that if I were to ask this church to pray for me, you would. I know you have in years past. 
I also know you have not about, about four years ago, going on five, they also had, and my wife hates it when I say this, they had to put me in a coma. They had to put me in a coma, all because I had an infection that got in up here. I use that a lot for excuses when it got right up in, in the brain, you know. And it messed with my sight. Sometimes I still can't see on, onto this side. But I know you prayed for me. I know a lot of people have prayed for me. And I know God has been with me the entire time because He said He would be. Even when there are times of darkness and terrible storms and Satan comes up and says, you're all alone. He is not with you. Sometimes Satan has to whisper. Sometimes Satan has to yell. But God stays the same because he wants his still, small voice. Just like when Peter went out to him in the... You remember when Jesus went walking to him on the water? And if the storm was so boisterous, if the wind was so heavy and the water was doing all this around them, somebody always say, well, how is it that they heard Jesus through all that? My, my sheep know my voice. And I know them, he said. And they, and they had to listen for Jesus, that still small voice when he says, come, come. The shortest invitation in the Bible. You, I've been in church services that will have an hour-long invitation. And finally, in that 59th minute, somebody will finally come down to the altar. I've been in church services that skip uh, an invitation altogether. But you have Jesus with that short invitation. Lord, if it's you calling me to you, Lord, if it's you calling me to be saved, if it's you calling me to give my life to you, to seek forgiveness of my sins, call unto me, let me come unto you. And all he ha- he says, come. That's all it takes. We're, we keep waiting for something miraculous to happen. Something miraculous happened on the cross. That's all it needed. That's all it took. That's where their miraculous event took place from there on out. It's all up to us just to accept He did the hard work. For years I've heard people try to add to it. Well, you've got to do this. Well, you've got to do that. Well, now I think you've got to go here and you've got to go there. The hard work was done on the cross of Calvary when Jesus hung between heaven and earth and He allowed the nails into His hands and His feet and He said, it is finished. He was nowhere near done with you, but the plan of salvation had come fourfold. What needed to take place for us to be saved took place on that cross. But God went walking into them in the garden and said the one Hebrew word, ayaka. And I believe that you could take our entire theology... You could take our entire belief system into that one word. That's getting pretty deep. That's getting pretty deep. This is a thick book. This is a thick book. This is, this is a Bible that I got. Uh, my wife makes fun of me. I got a lot of Bibles. She's got a lot of purses. I got a lot of Bibles. Guess which one's God's more pleased with? And I also say those things knowing good, I know full and well I'm going to have to answer for them. And I don't mean in, in when I leave the world, I mean when I leave the building, I'm going to have to answer for them. But I got this one back about four years ago. This was a Christmas present to me. She said, I don't know what to get. You just get what you want. So I had this one specially made. And that is when I got so sick and I had to be put in the hospital and, and I spent four days into a coma. And then I remember when I came home after those days, I remember, think, I remember seeing this Bible right where it was on the, co- on the table where I'd left it. And my eyesight hadn't fully regained at that point. And I remember thinking, Lord, just let me read it again. I've not got a chance to fully enjoy. Let me read it again. Ain't he good this morning? I can walk, I can walk, I've got kids, I'm spilling water. (laughs) 
I can walk, I've got my kids, I've got my wife, I can, I can see. Lord have mercy, don't ever put God in a box. He can do so much more than we think. He can do so much more than we think. But what I love about this is that it shows that, first of all, from the beginning of time, God was seeking out sinners. From the beginning of time, God was going to where we are, not expecting us to do something holy and perfect to get to where He is. But God loved us enough to go where we are, back into that garden where He knew what they had done, and sought them out and said, where are you? Giving us the opportunity to say, Lord, I am right here. I need you. Jesus said that for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. He didn't come into the world to condemn the world because the world without him is condemned already. He didn't come here to shake his finger and point at us and say, how dare you, how dare you, I can't believe you. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. That's me. That is me. Paul said that he came to save sinners of whom I am chief. I, I want to argue with him sometimes over that. I want to argue with him over that sometimes. That's what Jesus Christ came to do. And even back in the beginning, that is what God is doing. He's seeking that which has disobeyed him. Anybody ever disobey God? Here in a few minutes, we're probably going to give an invitation. Somebody's going to disobey him because he's saying, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. And somebody's going to choose to take their burden right back, right back home with them. Somebody's going to choose to take that burden, to take that shame, to take that sin and take it right back home with them rather than giving it to the one who died to take it. The Bible says that this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of all the theology, of all the practices, of everything that man has tried to add and build on top of it, it all comes down to the basic truth that Jesus Christ saves sinners. And if he never does anything else, if he never calms another storm for you, if he never e cures another illness for you, if he never answers another prayer, that right there is all he has to do. That is it. That is it. Well, preacher, I, sometimes I want to give a testimony, but I don't have one. Did he save you? There you go. Start with that. Start with the fact that you have been saved by the grace of God. That through the blood of Jesus Christ, your sins have been washed away and forgiven. And now you get to be a child of God, an heir with Jesus Christ. That all that heaven has to offer is now yours as well. All because Christ Jesus stood in your place on the cross, you get to stand as in his place in heaven. Isn't that amazing? That he loved us that much. And when God stepped out into this garden, I believe it was Jesus. You can call it what you want. But when he's walking through the garden, he says, where are you? And we're dealing with Jesus, the one who knew what we, what we do anyway, but he still wanted to seek them. He still went and sought them out to find out where they were because he wanted them to confess he wanted them. He put the everything that he wanted right there. And I've heard a lot of people say, well, if, if God didn't want them to, why did he put it there? Because we don't understand freedom until we understand boundaries. We don't understand the purpose of having our own free will if living for God is the only choice we have. God doesn't want us to worship and glorify him or to come to him because we don't have any other choice. He wants us to come to him because we realize how bad it is there. We, he wants us to understand the goodness of there because of how bad it is here. 
And so he put that tree in the middle. Some can call it an apple. Some can call it a pomegranate. The Bible calls it fruit. And Satan just said, surely you won't die. And so God knew that they had already disobeyed him. Why would he love us enough to come after us if we willingly, purposefully did exactly what he told us not to do? In my house, I call that stupid games and stupid prizes. Because when you've got kids my age, they're bound to do something you don't want them to. Does it mean I don't love them? No. Does it mean I'm not going to pick them up and hold them when they smash the finger in the drawer? I'm still going to. Does it mean we're not going to take care of them and tell them it's all going to? Yes, we are. But they disobeyed me. They're still my child. You see where I'm going with this? They're still my child. And even when we disobey God, He still loves us enough to welcome us back because He doesn't want us to go far and stay there just because we deserve it. If we deserve it, Christ Jesus would have never stepped foot out of heaven. If we could do it on our own, Christ would have never stepped foot out of heaven. If God didn't want us to be with him, he would have never have allowed Jesus to step away from the presence and the glory of God to take on the cross. But the Bible says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Even though we disobey God and we purposefully go away from him, he wants us to come back. He seeks us to come back. And then He welcomes us to confess. He welcomes us to come right back. Just like with the prodigal son, He wants us to come back home. He wants us to be right with Him. Can you imagine the heartbreak that he must have felt when he looked down and he seen the shape we were in and the shape that we were in, the only thing that could ever help us was to crucify his own son? I've, I've, people have asked me this before. How do you know God loves you? Because Jesus died on a cross for me. Because the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son. Well, that don't mean nothing. I've got two children of my own. Lord, have mercy. I love them so much. But if I had to sacrifice either of them for your sins, I hate that for you. That's how I know God loves me. Oh, but Jesus was going to be fine all along. It doesn't mean the nails hurt any less. But Jesus knew that he'd come again three days later. That doesn't mean he didn't feel the pain of the tomb. That doesn't mean he didn't feel the sting of death. He didn't feel the temporary victory of that tomb when they laid him right down in it. And he stayed there in darkness alone and he hung on that cross between heaven and earth with his blood pouring for us. All because he looked down 2,000 years later and he saw somebody that would need to be saved. And I also know he loves us for this. I know he loves me for this because if I was the only person to ever call upon him to be saved, he still would have done it. If you were the only one to ever be saved, Christ Jesus still would have took on the cross. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. You think you're not welcome to God? You think God isn't begging you to come to Him? God knows. Not even the angels in heaven knows when that time is going to come. But God does. And just like Brother said earlier, it is not His will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know what all means? 
It means you, it means me, it means everybody. That all should come to repentance. What's he waiting on to take us home? It might be you. What's he waiting on before he says, Son, go get your children? It might very well be you. Because you are the one who's away from the fold. You are the one who is away and God is seeking you. And he says, where are you? Because he wants you to announce to him where you are. And where you are is away from God. And he says, come back. He says, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, who are burdened, who are beat down. Not the ones who's got it all figured out. Is that anybody in here? Not the ones who don't need a Savior. Not the ones who has it all packaged and, and the, with neat little bows. Not the one who's got it all figured out. The ones who are weary. The ones who are tired. The ones who just need God to pick them up and carry them the rest of the way. I fall into that category. That's me. I need to be carried. Not just hold my hand, precious Lord, but sometimes I need you to pick me up and hold me just like that sheep and carry me for a little while, Lord, and carry me for a little while because God desires our restoration. God wasn't happy that Adam and Eve was away from him. God's not happy that we are away from him. God's not happy that you are away from him. He wants you to be restored. He wants you to... Lord, that song they sang... I, uh, God bless your all's heart. Y'all did great this morning. Oh, you know, you go to school with some of these people. What has it been, about five, six years ago we graduated? Yeah. Yeah. My wife ain't finding that in a bit funny. But we graduated a few years ago, but, but that song, We Were Made to Thrive, Lord have, my goodness. One thing that's always got me is when somebody walks around and says, oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. We are. We are. But God didn't save us and pick us up and put us where we needed to be just so we could keep living like it. God, picked, God saved us, put us where we needed to be. He took out the old heart. He put a new heart in all because he wants us to walk in the newness of life. And the newness of life is that we can walk tall and happy and joyful knowing that this world is not our home we are just passing through and no matter how bad it gets here Lord have mercy I hasn't seen how great it's going to be up there ear hasn't heard how great it's going to be up there and he wants us to live our life telling everybody yeah it's bad here but let me tell you when it's going to get better let me tell you how it's going to get better it gets better when you confess unto God when he says where are you and you say here I am Lord here I am save me because I am tired of being in the wilderness I am tired of being away from the fold I am tired of being in the darkness I am ready Lord for you to save me to make me a new that's what the Bible says we are a new creature in Christ in Christ Jesus and we can be joyful. We can be happy. We, can, we ought to be the happiest bunch of people on God's green earth because we're saved. We're saved. Brother Johnson used to say, you've always got some that sit and look like they've been eating saw briars for breakfast. I don't know about you, but when he saved me, he gave me a new heart. He gave me a new passion. He gave me a new love. He gave me a new mind. And one of these days, he's going to give me a new body. Every summer, my, my daughter likes for me to tell the story. I got scars all over me. You, you, every biopsy, every surgery, even the one on my back where they took the tumor that was about this big off of my spine. That's the one the doctor said, well, you know, we're going to... We're going to, and the surgery's going to take about three or four hours, and, and maybe in, in a few days we'll take the stitches out. And he asked if I had any other questions. Lindsay, she know, Lindsay knows where I'm going with this. He asked if I had any questions. I said, well, the surgery and all that you've answered, but how long do you think it'll be before I can walk again? 
Mr. Thacker. You know when people call you Mr. or Miss, you know, it's, it's usually not good news. It's usually bill collectors or somebody wanting something. We don't think you'll ever walk again. Really? We don't think you'll ever walk again. I remember the look on my wife's face. All we, all we wanted was just to get better and get the cancerous tumor off of the body. Tell me I won't ever walk again. You don't know what God knows. Don't put my God into a box and tell me that He's not able. Don't tell me that God is not able. Because there's someone here that's saying, well, God won't save me. You don't know what I've done. You're right. I don't know what you've done. But God knows what you've done. And He's seeking to save you anyway. Because He wants to restore you to the life that He created for you. He didn't create you so that you can live a life in shame and in guilt and in sin. He put Jesus on the cross of Calvary so that we could walk in the newness of life. And the Bible says, Therefore, as by the office of one judgment came upon all men uh, to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the gift, free gift came unto all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. <laughs> by what Christ did, we become righteous. By Him. Don't ever think it's by anything you've done. Don't ever think it's by how much you tithe or by how much you attend church or by how many times you get baptized. Don't ever think it's by anything you've done other than what Christ Jesus did. Brother, am I wrong? It's all about what Christ Jesus did on that cross. And then it goes on to say, and I love this, but where sin abounded, grace did abound, much more abound. Wherever there is sin and however great the sin is, no matter how great and huge the disobedience of God is, grace covers it. Grace covers it. No matter how many times we shake our fist and say, I don't need God, grace covers it. No matter how many times we walk away from God or willfully sin against God or say, I don't need God, I don't need the cross, God is right there with grace covering it all. Wherever your sin is, His grace covers it. And then He works His redemption. Being confident of this very thing, that He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's not, he didn't want to leave you in your sin then, and he's not about to leave you now. The storms may rise and the waves may blow, the wind may be boisterous of everything that we have to endure. Somebody once asked me, why do we have to go through all this? If we had it so good down here, we wouldn't want to be there. And of all the things you've been through, your cancer, you're, you're not able to walk, all this, don't you, ever, don't, you, don't you just look forward to the day you can look at Jesus and say, why did I have to go through all that? You know what I'm looking forward to? I'm looking forward to the day that I get to kneel at the feet of Jesus. And nothing that I had to go through here will ever cross my mind again. When my daughter asks me every year why I have these scars on my body, there's going to come a day when I get a new body and I won't have the scars anymore. And the only scars that I'm ever going to care about there is the scars on the hands of my Savior because that's how I got saved. That is how Jesus Christ was able to take my sins away because He took my place on the cross. Preacher, you sure take it serious. You better believe I do. Because when he hung on that cross, he knew I needed a Savior. 
When he hung on that cross, he knew that you needed a Savior and he called you out by name. And he's calling you out by name right now to be saved. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son in whom we have redemption through his blood and praise God. Even the forgiveness of sins. I'm going to get to stand before God. One of these days, I'm going to get to kneel at the feet of Jesus. And ain't nothing here going to matter. I'm not going to think about all this. I'm not going to think about all the pain and the sickness and the heartache and the disease and the suffering and all that we have to go through. Because Jesus says there's a better way, there's a better life that this world can offer, this world will never offer. You'll never find what Jesus has. It's in Him. And when we're there, I'm looking forward to that street of gold. I'm looking forward to the, to the gates of pearl. I'm looking forward to all of it. I can't wait to see it. But if none of that was there, if none of it was there, Jesus is. That's what makes it heaven. Because where Jesus is, there's nothing else that's going to bother you. Where Jesus is, the pain and the suffering. And I don't mean to make light of it. If you think, I'm, I promise I'm not. But no matter how great your suffering is this morning, no matter what you've got coming up this week that's making you a nervous wreck today, no matter what you've got coming up in the next couple of weeks or the next couple of months that is causing you to lose sleep at night, I'm not trying to make light of it. I'm trying to make great of the power of Jesus because no matter what it is, Jesus has it covered. No matter what you're afraid of, Jesus has defeated it. No matter what might come your way, Jesus has it under control. No matter what it is, it's Jesus. Jesus, the sweetest name I know. And if there is one thing that I can leave you with this morning, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. Because even from the very beginning, He was seeking to save. Just like right now, he is seeking to save. 